everyone. Uh, I hope everyone is doing well. I just want to get started uh, with my presentation. Uh, I will be presenting on acromegaly slash gigantism. So what is acromegaly gigantism? Uh, it's basically a disorder in which the pituitary gland produces too much uh, growth hormone. So the pituitary gland is what we'll be going over in this slide. Um, the pituitary gland produces hormones. The release of these hormones are controlled by the hypothalamus, which uh, sits right above the pituitary gland. The hypothalamus gover uh, governs the body's homeostasis, and when the body is off, uh, off balance, the hypothalamus directs the pituitary or the master gland, as it's also known to release certain hormones into the body. This slide will be covering the hormones released by the pituitary gland, um, both the anterior and the posterior. Uh, again, these um, glands receive their information from the hypothalamus, which dictates how much hormone will be uh, introduced into the bloodstream. We'll begin with the anterior pituitary gland. Uh, first up would be the growth hormone, or GH. Uh, it's obvious uses for growth in the body. Uh, next up would be the follicle-stimulating hormone, or FSH. Um, it's used for development and reproduction. Uh, let's see, luteinizing hormone, LH, um, is essential to testosterone production and reproduction. We also have adrenocorticotropic hormone. Uh, it's involved in stress and fear responses. Thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH, is important for metabolism. And last on this uh, list here for the anterior pituitary gland would be the prolactin, which promotes milk production in females. The posterior pituitary gland um, only has two hormones that it releases, uh, oxytocin, uh, which is used for lactation and childbirth, and vasopressin, um, its use is in controlling the blood pressure or blood pressure regulation and urine output. Acromegaly is most commonly caused by a non-cancerous tumor. Um, as you can see on this slide here, the tumor, which is in a yellow mustard color, um, is spreading throughout the uh, pituitary region. Um, basically infiltrating the pituitary stalk, the pituitary gland, and of course the optic chiasm, which sits right above the pituitary um, gland itself. Uh, tumors can be microscopic or significantly visible as the one seen on the screen. Uh, the optic chiasm also sits, as mentioned earlier, uh, right above that pituitary gland. As a result, uh, when the tumor has no room to grow, it fights for space, which causes the optic uh, chiasm to be compressed. This is why loss of vision uh, tends to be one of the signs uh, in pituitary, uh, pituitary tumors. On this slide here, we'll be going over some of the uh, physical manifestations of acromegaly. Um, elevated growth hormone can lead to numerous problems, which can be seen in someone's physical appearance. Uh, the images shown on this slide have a comparison of a normal hand and that of someone who has uh, acromegaly, um, as well as um, the enlarged hand. You can see the enlarged feet. And on the far left picture, um, someone, uh, this picture is actually um, that of gigantism, which I'll go over towards the end of the uh, slide and introduce or explain the difference between acromegaly and gigantism. But again, uh, the main characteristic being it's uh, an enlarged body part or enlarged body altogether. Uh, these uh, changes do include the hands and feet, but can also include the uh, forehead or a protrusion of the forehead, um, increased size of the jaw, spreading of the teeth, uh, increase facial hair in women, as well as, uh, as well as excessive sweating in the palms. Excess body fluid and tissue thickening can occur 
in the tongue and throat area, which lead to snoring and uh, obstructive sleep apnea. Um, carpal tunnel syndrome as well, even more serious for long-term health is the increased risk of heart enlargement or cardiomegaly. Uh, hypertension and diabetes are also very well uh, known as a symptom of the um, acromegaly. And in, it's documented that an increased risk of colon polyps or colon cancer. This is due to the excess growth or growth hormone, which also stimulates not only organ tissues, limbs, um, but um, cells or in this case, cancer cells. Diagnosis and treatment uh, with regards to acromegaly. Um, diagnosis includes blood tests, which measure both the uh, growth hormone along with the growth factor hormone, which is also found in the body. Um, it's also known as GF1 and it's produced by the liver. Uh, measurements of these um, growth hormones is taken into account. Normally under certain conditions, when they do a blood draw, uh, these uh, hormones would um, start to uh, scale down on their own, but elevated levels would indicate a, a possible sign for or diagnosis of acromegaly. Um, once the uh, blood test is confirmed to be positive, uh, additional um, diagnosis is done with imaging. Um, those include CT scans and MRIs, and those are used to uh, locate and measure the tumor itself. Uh, medications or treatment. Treatment includes, or well, beginning with medications, we have somostatin analogs, and they work uh, by reducing the release of the growth hormone and possibly shrink the tumor in the process. Also, uh, dopamine agonists, which can inhibit the release of the growth hormone, just not as good as uh, somostatin. Um, also, we have a growth hormone receptor antagonist. Uh, they work by blocking uh, the growth hormone from signaling the body to make growth factor hormone as I mentioned earlier, uh, also known as GF1, which is released by the liver. Uh, in the uh, middle picture, um, it's basically just um, an image of someone receiving focused radiation to attack the uh, tumor. Uh, but more commonly used um, would be the transphenoidal surgery. Uh, it's basically as uh, if you take a look at the image on the far right, um, they uh, insert basically a, a surgical drill that will break through uh, the sphenol bone to get into the uh, pituitary tumor as shown by the blue arrow. And uh, once they are able to locate the pituitary tumor, then uh, they make a surgical incision, remove the tumor, and that would be the procedure itself. Demographics. Um, acromegaly is rare. Scientists estimate that about three to 14 of every 100,000 people have been diagnosed as having acromegaly. It is most diagnosed in middle age adults, but can appear at any age. Now, the title of my uh, presentation was Acromegaly slash Gigantism. I wanted to uh, briefly go over gigantism. Um, so basically, uh, it uh, affects children. Um, too much growth hormone causes a condition called gigantism rather than acromegaly. Gigantism occurs when the excess growth hormone begins before the end of puberty, when children's growth plates fuse or close. Having too much growth hormone before the growth plates uh, close causes children to grow tall in height. Um, if you remember a few slides back, there was a picture of a very, very tall man. More than likely, his um, growth um, hormones began before puberty. And so as a result, um, his bones, um, I wouldn't say benefited, but they um, were affected and along with 
in many other parts of the body, um, which allowed the individual to grow uh, substantially in height. And it wasn't just focused on the organs, limbs, uh, or anything like that. So the, the difference being that gigantism uh, pertains to children uh, before puberty.